is the yes. Oh, um, it is the December sixteenth version of this presentation. Some folks had this um, lecture yesterday, and it's quarter two, week six. And today we're talking about organic molecules. Now we had an extended conversation about this with Ms. Kacherian, um, and even a couple of quizzes. And so what I'm going to do is elaborate on it and have it more focused on what they'll test you for on the MCAS. So. We're kind of uh, taking taking some stuff you already know, and we're building on it. We are um, looking at it a little more closely. And first off, one of the things that they will ask you on the MCAS is what an organic molecule is. And there's two things they'll want you to know, which we'll cover in class today several times, but why don't we start off with an intro. For one, organic molecules are large molecules. They are not micro. Um, what was the word we read in the last chapter to describe cells that are Big. Particularly, we talk about some certain white blood cells, some leukocytes that are big eaters. Just that, just the prefix. You said it. So micro is little. Macro, right? So mo organic molecules are also known as macro molecules or large molecules, and organic molecules have a particular element, something from the periodic table. It begins with first letter of my last name. Copper? Not copper. Carbon? Carbon. Oh. Right, so what I would also say is underline that C in organic molecules. And we're going to have further discussions about this, but we're just kind of planting the seeds towards better understanding for later on. Right, so know that organic molecules are macromolecules, they are large molecules, and they all contain carbon. All right, now a moment ago I was talking about your check-in chart and how some variables in your life, such as your immunity, are dependent upon some of the other choices you make, right, the independent variables in your existence. Does anyone know why we're not supposed to eat before going to bed? Like, why shouldn't you have a big old meal and then, like, take a sack? I mean, because your, your digestive system can't, didn't break down anything. All right, so, she, so these guys are thinking about how the digestive system breaks food down, right? And um, maybe that's not going to work as well when you're sleeping. I guess we should go back to something we talked about months ago. Um, what happens when you are asleep at night? Or Maria, really you want to add before I ask my question? Yeah. Also, if you have a big dinner, your stomach feels heavy. So it's like you affect your respiratory system. All right, so you're starting to make some connections here that different systems affect each other, right? And if the digestive system is busy, Right, it might have impacts elsewhere. Awesome. Um, oh yeah. So when we sleep, what are we doing when we're sleeping? Our body shuts down. It doesn't shut down, but it's slower. All right. So your heartbeat slows. But like, why sleep? Like, why do we have to do this thing? Why does our body demand so many hours of sleep so much? To regenerate. To regenerate. Right. We do all our healing and growing when we're sleeping. All of our energy goes into fixing injuries. And at your age, right, extending um, your mass, right, so like growing. So if I have a big meal before I go to sleep, what does my body have to spend its energy doing instead of growing and regenerating? Digesting, right? So if you have a large meal before going to bed, instead of healing injuries and instead of growing, your body spends all its energy breaking down that food. So one of the rules they say is that you should Try to eat, you know, have dinner at least three hours before going to bed. So you can do a lot of your digestion and then spend your sleep time growing and repairing. All right, and then uh, as always, we'll have a friend read our quote for us. Um, Saida, if you could uh, read our heart quote, please. I have lived my whole life along with all people that are good. Anyone get the joke here? Molecules make up cells, and cells make up uh, us, right? So we eat molecules. Molecules are what we are. We're standing on molecules right now. Obviously, without them, there would be no existence of any kind. Um, so, right, so he's making the joke that they are a good company, of course. Um, all right, and then you'll notice that I've not assigned any new homeworks for this evening. It's only to work on your science fair, which we already talked about, the head of class. Monday, you've got to show, in, show up with your completed board. Um, boards are still for sale. How many dollars? Four. Four of them, right? Um, 
Yeah, so fork over your cash. I'll send you out with a board. All right, and um, the headmaster's coming to most of that most of the classes on Monday, so you know this is your chance to impress her and show you're excited to be at the Edward F. Kennedy Academy for Health Careers, Nobody. and uh, that you're looking to hopefully get some scholarships out of um, going to the city or state science fair, which is a lot of awards. Fun. Yeah, so city city fair is fun. They, they feed you and yeah, you get to kids from other schools. It's great. And since you've been before, you know, right? There's a huge variety of projects, right? People doing like robotic stuff, pe you know, very simple things like using different dish soaps. So it's kind of cool. And then you can also get what for next year? Ideas. Ideas, right? So if you wind up going, you know, and that's part of why we're going to do our in-class science here too, so you see what everyone else did and possibly do something cool for next year too. They have this big thingy and like it's like all covered up. Isn't you go inside class? it, and it's Whoa. all black. It's so cool, but it just smells because people. No, the the school wide is in January after Christmas break. So like I so part of what we're doing on Monday, right, is getting you prepared, giving you some feedback, so people can say, hey, listen, your hypothesis is great, but maybe you need more on your conclusion. And then on Christmas break, you can fix it for the real deal in January. Um, yeah, good question. All right, so uh, let's move on. All right, so today we're going to talk about organic molecules again, things that you have seen before um, in health class. First time we're going to talk about carbohydrates. All right, and carbohydrate is a class of organic macromolecules that provide an organism with immediate calories. So, um, Jerome, what does the word immediate mean? Quick. Um, quick, or if I say, like, you have to do this immediately, I'm saying that you have to do it right, away. right now, right away, right? So, carbohydrates provide us with, with um, energy that we can use in the moment. Um, maybe some folks who remind me from Ms. Kachirian's class, what are some foods that have carbohydrates, foods that give you energy for right now? Yes, ma'am. Pasta. All right, pasta could, sure. Vegetables. Fruits, vegetables, right? Things that can be broken down easily by the body um, can give you carbohydrate energy, right? Energy for the moment. And what we're going to do now is ex extend on some of that learning about um, this idea of macro and micromolecules. All right, so a carb, oh wait, sorry, first I want to break down carbohydrate. All right, so we've got this word up here, and this word actually tells us a lot of what we need to know about this molecule. For one, we have this prefix carbo. So obviously what element do we know is in this? Carbon. Carbon, carbon right? So carbon is in there. Um, rank is a carbo. And hydrate gives us another hint. Water. 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 What's the chemical formula for water? H2O. Which, which means we what? H Two is for? Awesome, right? So we already know, just based on the name, right, that carbohydrates have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Right, so you can often use your ELA skills to um, determine the meaning of a word, even if you don't have the definition. Right, so this is a molecule containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, um, carbohydrates come in single units. Single, the single unit of a, of a carbohydrate is known as a monosaccharide, right? So this is a micro unit, a singular unit. And maybe someone can tell me, make sure they've heard this before. Um, not here to, yet. Um, Kyle, what does mono mean? One, right? Mono indicates that something is in the singular, right? So this prefix also backs up this idea, right, that this is a single unit of sugar, a monosaccharide. All right, and then, what do you think I'm going to call a larger unit? Rather than micro, it would be? Macro. Macro, awesome. Right, so um, a larger, a, if you put a bunch of monosaccharides together, you group them, you get a chain of them, you have a macro molecule, and this is a polysaccharide, and this one I know everyone knows, but we'll give Dylan a chance to tell us. Dylan, what does poly indicate about something? Think about math. So when you have an object, oh. um, like a polygon, does it have one only one side? It has five, two or more, more, right? Oh, right, right, right. So greater than or equal to two. So a polysaccharide is indicating that we've got at least two monosaccharides, possibly more all put together. Um, all right, and again, that would be a good version of a macromolecule. 
Now, there's generally two things they'll ask you on the MCAS about carbohydrates. One, you know, what kind of energy to give you, and you know it's energy for now, it's immediate energy. They'll often ask you also um, about what some of the simpler versions, more familiar versions are. So one of them is glucose, which we talked about before. Yes? Anything that ends in coast, os. Os is a? Sugar. Is a sugar, right? Sugar. So notice I've got that os underlined there, right? Anything that ends in os is a sugar. Um, most common formula that you'll see on the MCAS is glucose, C6H12O6. Write that down. Obviously. Thank you. Um, and we're going to do a little experiment today as part of our larger experiment. So um, folks might notice on the tables around the room, there are jars that are labeled. Um, Carly, can you tell me what's on your table? All right, so there's a bread solution I made. Some of you saw me make that this morning. Um, Snyder, what's on your table? Great. So, so he's saying that there's egg on his table. So part of what I, we're going to do today is we're going to test different food ingredients for whether they have carbohydrates. And we're going to do the carbohydrate test first. So Ivy, could you tell me what the name of the molecule is on here? It's in the bold face right there. shapes, and they'll say, which one of these is the carbohydrate? 
And the one that's the hexagon is your is your gold star answer. Right? So Are you sure? Absolutely. You know. <clears throat> All right, so so at this point, again, the uh, important learnings we want to walk away with from our MCAT for MCAS is right, carbohydrates give you quick energy for now. They have carbon, you know, hydrogen and oxygen, and a hexagonal shape. All right, so um, what happened Ew. to my solution? What, what color has it become? Yellow. Orange. Yellow. A golden yellow, right? So anytime you mix Benedict's with a sugary substance and heat it, it becomes golden. So as part of our experiment today, so uh, Shalani, what do you guys have at your table? Potato. Potato, right? So part of what we're we'll be doing today is you're going to take potato juice, mix it with Benedict's and heat it, and see if it turns gold but for it's already, it's already that color. Somewhat. I mean, it's a paler color, but, you know, can you say that can these I two things that? are the same? Yeah, and you can pass it around if you like. Y'all pass it around. Right, that's why it's so orange. All right, so let's move on to our next organic molecule, something else we talked about before. Um, so you guys also in Ms. Kishirin's class covered lipids. Fat. Or fats, right? Um, our more common word, right? So you've noticed a lot of what happens in high school is we take words you've known since you were a child, and we're adding some more complex um, synonyms for those. All right, great. So lipids, um, fats are molecules. They have two primary functions um, in the body of an animal. One is they insulate the body. So, um, Carla, could you tell us, what is it when you insulate something? Why do we have insulation in a house? Why do we, why do we wear puffy, insulated coats in the winter? To keep You had it. All right, so, because it traps heat, right? Part of what fat does for the body is it holds heat inside, right? It helps us to thermoregulate. Um, and then also the second job of lipids is they store calories, right? They allow us to store calories for later. So tell me about the lifestyle of many wild animals. What are they doing all summer long? Eating. Eating, right? They're eating all summer long so they can get big and fat. fat so that during the winter they can stay warm and, no, and have food, right? So part of what fats do is they allow us to store food energy for later on when food might not be available. All right, and just like the last one, um, lipids come in single unit molecules, a micro unit known as a fatty acid. And again, all this should feel fun, free, easy, and familiar from health class. Um, right, a single unit, a micro unit is a fatty acid. And our larger unit of fat, a macromolecule, is a saturated fat. And we've got a simple model down here for that. So there's some stuff we want to cover and talk about with it. Because um, I know that Ms. Kachirian did a great job covering this. I saw some of your quizzes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Now, right now, we're saying that this molecule is a saturated fat. What does it have a lot of in it? What atom do you see a lot of? Hydrogens. Now, if I remove some of these hydrogens, let's say you know the molecule um, gets broken down a little bit. What would I rename this now that there is less saturation? Unsaturated. Unsaturated, right? So an unsaturated fat is one that has fewer hydrogens, fewer energy-containing um, electrons. All right. Now, if you look at the basic shape of this, it, it's kind of like a chain, right? You see units and they're linked together. What they'll commonly show you as a simplified picture on the MCAS for your lipid is they'll kind of have this chain-like structure with a little Y at the end. Um, and that would be your simple drawing that you want to put down um, to identify for your MCAS. Right? Notice it's very different than the hexagonal structure of your carbohydrate. All right, we also want to look at the chemical formula as that gives us a little bit more of a layering of thought. Um, all right, so a typical lipid might have 10 carbons, 20 hydrogens, and two oxygens. What's the same as our carbohydrate? What's similar to our carbohydrate formula? Um, what things does it have that are the same? Um, CO2. Right, C, C, H, and O, right? So right, it, ha it has the same formula in terms of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. But what's different? What's different about the quantity? It's, it has a lot of hydrogens. There's a lot of hydrogens. And what is there less of? 
oxygens, right? So you'll notice here that there's only these two oxygens. So the main, one of the main differences between a lipid and a carbohydrate is, is the quantity of oxygens versus hydrogens, right? So you have many of these hydrogens and many fewer of these oxygens. All right. And then our last organic molecule we talk about are our proteins. And folks who remember from Ms. Kachurian's class, proteins are organic molecules that provide the organism with material to build structures. So proteins are pivotal in everything about our body. They make up the structures of our body. They're the building blocks. They're also the hormones that signal our body and what to do. They also are the enzymes that help our body um, function and break down and build molecules. So proteins basically do and are everything that we are. Can one of my fine scholars remind me which organelle in the cell is based? Right. Yeah, yelled out already. It's our ribosomes, right? Um, and our ribosomes glue together smaller molecules to make a protein. And Ms. Kishuni did cover this with you. Does anyone remember what the single unit of a protein is? The there's a two-word statement. Both words begin with A. Is that one of your quizzes, actually? Amino acids. Indeed. Right, so a single unit of proteins are amino acids. These are what are assembled in your ribosomes. Right, so a micro, a single unit of a protein is an amino acid. And then your ribosomes take many amino acids and put them together. And they form what is known as a peptide, um, or a chain of amino acids. Yeah, I'll go any, any further, any faster. Um, we also have a test for proteins for our lab today. Um, so Snyder, what's inside of this container? Broth, right? So what I have here is lab-grade broth. Um, and when you think of broth, what do you immediately think of? Fat. Soup. Think of soup and what's the most common soup you're making broth out of? Chicken. And chicken has lots of? Fat. Proteins, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has fats too, but then there's more protein than not, right? So, so I'm going to make a little of this broth here. And so, it's just the heater, folks. All right, so does this look pretty similar to chicken broth? Yeah. Right? So it's got the yellowish hue. All right, so um, we've also had a test for proteins. All right, so. So, all right, I don't necessarily need to get the numbers down, 
but I do need the letters. Um, and I'm going to make this a little bigger um, for the cheap seats in the back so everyone gets the important stuff. What are cheap seats? All right. So what's the same as our carbohydrate and lipid? Oh, all right, they have the C, H, what and the O, it? right? So they all, so all organic molecules seem, or at least the ones we yeah. talked about today, seem to have this going on. What do we think that Nitrogen. N stands for? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Very nice. Um, right. So sulfur. Yeah. Um, we've got some sulfur here at the end. And protein. You may or may not have learned this in central grade chem. All right, I heard a close enough proximity. This is phosphorus. Oh, phosphorus. All right, great. And uh, depending on which middle school you went to, you may or may not have done a lot about this. We did. Uh, all right, so what you can see here is this acronym, CHOMPS, right, C-H-O-N-P-S. This often appears on the MCAS. So what I'm going to have you guys do is put a box around it, star it, do something to make this, Whoa. you know, ultra visible in your book. Because this CHOPS acronym does come up on the MCAS a lot. They'll ask you about what a lot of organic molecules have, and you'll want to, you know, remember that they have carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Um, all right, so yeah, again, highlight it, box it, do something to it to make it really noticeable. All right, so. We're, we're closing out, folks. We have a couple, couple more things to write, and then we'll uh, move on to our lab. Yeah, sure. Um, that mm. I
right, so what I've got here is a solution of water and starch. And you guys out here have the iodine. So um, pipette a little out of the bottle and tell me what color the liquid iodine is. Well, for, first, you mean, what color is the liquid inside your pipette? It's like a goldish yellow. Yeah, it's like a golden. If you see it in concentrated form, it's brown. And now you just take a little bit. You, you just you just pour some from the container right in there. We'll, we'll do this quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Ew. All right. So what what color did it transform to at the end? Blue. All right, great. And what you see up here, what is supposed to happen is if starch is there, it's supposed to turn a bluish purple, right? So we were able to um, prove that that was the case. Why is the white stuff All right. And again, you know. When you guys have chemistry next year, you're going to learn about why is it a clear liquid and a brown liquid would turn blue, right? Because that kind of defies the imagination. Um, is it a chemical reaction? There is a reaction, yeah. You guys will spend plenty of time um, on those. All right, so um, we also have a way of testing for fats. Um, who has recently gone to a fast food chain for a fried delight? What? What? Oh, who went to eat fast food? Right. All right. What happens to the outside of your bag as your fries? Oh, fry it's like greasy. All right. What does that mean? It's greasy. What is it? How, what What does it it's visually change oil. to look like? It's like, it's like oily. The bottom of the bag. What does that mean? It's oily. Like, the oil fresh off the oil bag. bag. Wait, what? All right. So first off, the bag starts off. It might be brown, right? And then as it gets oily, describe this. Use as many adjectives as you can. What? Gross. Are you saying it's dark? It looks maybe kind of darker. Um, would we say it is, it is dull or is it shiny? Shiny, shiny? It becomes shiny. Now, initially, the bag was opaque, right? Not see-through. Once it gets oily, what do you start to notice? You can see something. It kind of becomes translucent. You kind of see through it a little bit. So lipids, li a way to test for lipids in foods is they do what's called the rub test. You literally take the food and you rub it on a piece of paper, and if it becomes shiny and translucent, like you guys talked about, you have fats there, right? Pizza has a lot of lipids. Indeed, right? And who's ever blotted their pizza? You take a napkin and you like blot it? What does the appearance of the napkin look like afterwards? It's kind of, it becomes clear, it becomes transparent, right? So, so you guys are doing science all the time to even know. Um, all right. And last up, the one that um, Xavier did for us, we have our protein test, which is done with Biorets. Um, can folks see it down there, way at the bottom? Um, Biorets, B-I-U, B-I-U-R-E, B-I-U-R-E-T-S, Biorets. And Biorets, to change his color, again, from the blue liquid that was in his bottle to the violet, the pinkish purple that we saw here. All right, great. So, um, we did our notes. We're gonna get cranking on our lab. Um, in order to uh, uh, best capture all of our data from our lab today, we're gonna have a little chart. So we're gonna build our chart before we do anything else. All right. So, oh, and there, there was the thing we did today, right? You remember to show that Benedict turned gold, our iodine turned blue, our Byers turned purple. All right, and what folks need to get started is this grid. And then uh, we'll get our positive and negative results and put them in there.